about failure. Um, yeah, it's called successful failure, but one of the other titles I had, and I got a bit confused with the titles, was um, failing to fail. So, um, uh, <laughs> but it's somewhere in between success and, and, I mean, good and bad failure. Anyway, that's what I'm going to talk about. It's confusing, isn't it? Um, right, I hope I'm going to clarify it. Um, if I don't, then, well, I won't. Uh, sorry about all the humor. I'm a clown. Um, it's my job. I've been doing it for 30-something years as a performer, director, writer, researcher, um, and general sort of interested in anything to do with clowns. Um, so that's my perspective. That's really the perspective I'm going to come at failure from. Um, there may be others, but that's mine, and that's what I'm going to do. So, uh, well, clowns. So, before we go any further, you might say, oh, clowns, what, oh, no, what's that? Come on, you know what a clown is. Everyone knows what a clown is. I'm, I, I believe and I have faith in ni the whole of humanity, nearly, in the whole of history knows what a clown is. We don't have to explain what it is. However, just as a little bit of an introduction, we'll make clear that we all know what a clown is. So, different people have different ideas. Some people... Um, think of clowns as someone with a particular costume, um, or others, not only that one, obviously, um, but that's an example. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's not what, just one costume that all clowns share, I mean, come on. Um, anyway, that, that, that's Pepito's costume, that's Pepito. Um, uh, or others might just think of a clown's particular makeup, likewise, there's, you know, you, you don't share the makeup, you don't take it off your face, and anyway. This is getting a little bit absurd. Sorry. Or, or you might think of a clown just as the, just as the nose. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Um, other people don't see things so um, visually. Um, they think of things more in terms of action. So um, you might think of a clown as someone who drops their trousers. So not everyone who drops their trousers is a clown. It depends on the context, the conventions. We'll come back to context and conventions later. It's very important in clowning. Um, or you might think of a clown as someone uh, who makes a mess or makes a mess of someone. Again, you know, not every, not every time you make a mess doesn't mean you're a clown. Um, uh, or, ah, here's an interesting one. Um, behave like animals. Same thing, yeah? It, just because you behave like an animal doesn't mean you're a clown. Um, or defy the laws of, of the human body and generally of, of nature. Yeah? Um, so that's, yeah, in terms of what clowns do. Others, a little bit more, let's say, intellectual, uh, which we all are. Um, think of clowns, aren't we? Yes? Um, in terms of concepts, general things, like um, being stupid. Uh, that's a concept. That's a, 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 an abstract. It's not something you can do. I don't do stupid, yeah? it's, a, it's an abstract, yeah? um, or, or being silly, um, or actually, it's, it's, or just being childish, now that's me, <laughs> haven't changed. <laughs> uh, a little bit higher up the intellectual ladder, if you like, in terms of understanding what clowns are, um, uh, culturally specific. Now, here's an interesting one. Um, in one part of the world, a certain number of people, but not all of them, but I'm using this as an interesting example, a certain number of people will think of clowns as people who control the traffic. Yes, you all know what I'm talking about. You're talking about the clown and mime um, professionals employed by the city of Caracas in Venezuela. You all know that. Yeah? <laughs> you would know it if you were from Caracas and you knew something about clowns. Yeah? Culturally specific. Um, also, if you were f from um, an indigenous uh, village in a um, certain part of New Mexico, you would regard clowns as not just being funny, as being responsible also for fertility and a good crop. Now, one last thing into the regions of what clowns are. Um, if you're a historian, the English word clown was coined, was first used to mean someone who's not a gentleman. Um, just because you're not a gentleman on stage doesn't mean you're a clown, by the way. Yeah? Um, historically, a little bit later on, you might, uh, people thought clowns were those 
people who um, defied the devil and death, um, or didn't like policemen um, and beat them up. Interestingly, though, that's from Georgian England, around the time of Grimaldi, the most famous English clown. Um, beating policemen up wasn't the only thing clowns would do. They would also trip little old ladies up. <laughs> so that was the idea of what a clown would be then, a bit of a prankster. However, today, um, as evolution goes, goes, we've evolved into failure. Um, so many, or perhaps most people who take themselves seriously in clowning what they're doing, um, think, tend to think of clowns as um, those who are experts in failure. Um, so that's where we're going to go for. But not only clowns, um, so you see we've come back to, my, to the theme, uh, failure. So all the clown ideas, actually, could they all be explained by failure? Well, let's go with the failure from a clown point of view. Um, but not only clowns are interested in failure recently, lots of, lots of people have been interested in failure. Um, business people think that failure um, and being slightly clownish yourself um, is a good way to greater productivity. This book is all about that. How to make more capitalism by being a failure. Um, well, why not? Um, then there's um, quite a few self-help books on um, how not to strive for success, i.e. failure will help you be happier. Um, we won't, we'll gloss over that for the moment. Um, and then, of course, performance study is a very important subject for academic writing these days. Failure. Um, so there you go. Um, important areas of, of wisdom um, in our contemporary society. Business, self-help, and the academy. Oh, and um, there's that other one. Um, what is it? Yeah, oh yeah, the internet meme. About being wrong, failure anyway. Yeah, very popular these days. So, what is it about failure that we're so fascinated in, and why do we think it's so interesting and useful for us? Um, and is, is it a good thing, that fascination? Is it a bad thing? That's what I'm interested in. Um, let's go with I want to demonstrate a little bit how I teach people to be clowns, because I teach students of clowning. Um, so that you get an idea about how failure might work for a, let's call it a contemporary clown. Um, <clears throat> so, I'm, I'm going to need a clown student. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to ask for volunteers. Um, so, because you're not clown students, you can't, haven't come here to, to look stupid, um, I, I think. <laughs> no, you haven't. Good. Um, and, and don't worry, you, I don't even ask you to be a, an audience to these clown students, and you don't have to laugh, yeah? In fact, nobody has to laugh, um, ever, I would say. There you go. You can. No, you, you, I, you don't have to, but, you know, it's not forbidden either, yeah? I can't tell you what to do. So here's my clown student for today. Yeah. I didn't want to use a real person because there's all the ethical problems with that. <laughs> um, so here's a little exercise which I'm very fond of and I use incessantly. Um, and it's called the step laugh. And how it works is that when, when the audience for the student, which would have been you if you were that, but you're not, so don't worry. Don't have to laugh. Um, so the audience for the student, when they laugh, the student will take a step forward. Yeah, forwards mean, well, let's say, cross the stage. Yeah, and when they don't laugh for a time, they take a step back. That's that's you just have to pick up on the laughter. Yeah. So um, basically, that's that's it. So um, so that's my instruction to the chair, blue chair. So um, when there's laughter, you take a step. Yeah. Silence, it goes back. So, no. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, okay. Oh. Anyway, so you see, it keeps going backwards and forwards. The ideal place to be is somewhere in here in the middle, you know? Um, uh, so that, that's interesting. Now, that exercise hasn't come out of nowhere. That's come out of the whole... Um, a whole, um, what's the word, um, 
yeah, tradition, let's say, a recent tradition, um, 50 years old perhaps, uh, Jacques Lecoq, the uh, trainer of performers, got interested in clowns in the early 60s and came up with an exercise which was, oh, you, get up and make us laugh. Um, they didn't make anyone laugh, and they sat down again and everyone laughed. Um, he said, aha, I found the teaching method for clowning. Um, and there's, now, there's a very technical word for this, um, which you need to know if you go into clowning, and that word is flop. And you've just seen some flops here, um, which this marvellous blue chair has done. Um, it attempted um, to get across the stage, failed to, because you didn't laugh, moved back, got a laugh, succeeded. So, just to get that in your head, it's um, try to be funny, fail to be funny, equals be funny. That's the flop. Yeah, it's a bit difficult. If you're not good at maths, maybe that's a bit... You know, it's like... Because it's really contradictory. It's like one of those paradoxes, but you know, you write it, you, you see it, and it works. Um, but Lecoq himself and many others um, uh, weren't just intrigued by the fact that this provoked laughter, um, but also what he thought he saw was a whole load of other things that when this, this flop happened, was that the person, in his words, was stripped bare. Yep. So um, by that, I think he meant, or what he explains is, that we could see the authentic self. These are the kinds of words that were being used in the 60s. Of course, we don't use those words anymore, do we? No. Hmm. Uh, the authentic self, um, the spontaneous vulnerability of this stripped bare person that we can see without their social masks um, and their attempts to be clever and convince us, and so on and so on. Yeah? Interesting interpretation. Now, if you just now, when the chair was doing the exercise, felt that you saw it stripped bare, you will be in agreement with the majority of clown teachers since 1962. Now, ah, well, of course, the court didn't use chairs, he used people. Um, and most clown teachers use people. But if, if it could be you saw the vulnerability of the chair, you would be in agreement with him. Yeah? I'm not going to ask you, because I don't want to embarrass you. Um, yeah, which way is embarrassing? If you saw it or you didn't see it. Um, However, if you didn't see the vulnerability of the chair, you might be agree in agreement with me, um, who I didn't see it. Um, I, I saw a formula for making you laugh, which is the intention of clowns. Now, hang on a minute. Um, ah, the other thing I wanted to ask you, sorry about that, is, um, or ask yourselves, is if you felt that you saw the vulnerability of the chair, what did it feel like when you laughed when that chair moved back, or I moved it back, um, and you laughed. What kind of a laugh was that? Was it the same kind of laugh as if I told you a joke, like, I don't know, um, what's brown and sticky? A stick, yeah. Um, so if you laughed at that, did you laugh because it's a funny joke, or did you laugh because it wasn't a funny joke? No? And what's the difference? And if you think the laugh, because it wasn't funny, is more real than the other laugh, then you'll agree with Lecoq that something real, something more real has been exposed and revealed. Um, but, however, as I said, there's this little formula, isn't there? Try to be funny, fail to be funny, be funny. Now, I don't know about you, but school maths wasn't really sold to me, sorry, taught to me, um, as um, a means of achieving authenticity. You know? Like two plus two equals four. A moment of revelation. <laughs> uh, it was for the first person who got it, obviously, you know, it's a eureka, yeah? Or maybe it is when you realize how it works. Hang on, maybe I have to revise on that. Anyway, um, but formulas don't usually lead us to authenticity. They're not supposed to, at least. But here's a nice little formula which does lead you to laugh and perhaps believe that the laugh has been somehow more real than if I came out here and said, okay, this is really funny laugh at this and you laugh at it. Huh? Anyway, so, so there you go. So it's up to you, as I said, in the end, whether you laugh or not. Or and it's up to you whether you feel, obviously, what you feel about the laughter, whether it reveals something authentic or not. But I would say 
that remember, this is all being done by a clown, yeah? By clowns. Now clowns, another thing that didn't come up on there, on the slides, was how clowns love to fool each other and to fool you, the audience. That's our business. Um, so if we've got a formula for fooling you into thinking something's true, we'll use it. Um, so I would say, rather than going, taking away that idea of, oh, failure leads to authenticity, we could change the world with it. By the way, the World Parliament of Clowns acts on that premise. The World Parliament of Clowns believes that by um, bringing the message of the flop to politicians and business leaders in the world, we will have a more just and, and compassionate society. Um, that's aside. So this is important work being done um, based on the belief in failure. Uh, but I, I would suggest to you that rather than um, believing in something like that, just have a look and see the trick and the illusion that's created. And then maybe something might change if we understand how illusions work. Thank you very much.